Good morning, good evening from wherever you are watching us. Welcome to this new tutorial where we are going to be learning how to use Playground AI. You will simply go to playgroundai.com and I'll be leaving the link to that in the description of this video and it will bring you to this home page. So to get started, you simply go to playgroundai.com and then you click on get started or log in. It's a simple thing. If you don't have an account, you simply use your email and a password and you'll be led to the home page. And this is the home page where you get to. You notice at the top here, we have import image. We have the move or select tool. We have the hand and the pan tool. The generate image at the top here. You can also see other things here, which you can use also to generate your images. So with Playground AI, we normally use prompts. So you simply type a message down here and then you generate your image. On this right hand side, you notice we have the prompt guidance and you can set this value by default, it is set at seven. So the higher the value, it makes your image as close as possible to what you are describing. And the lower the value, you have given the AI the freedom to just generate the image without using the restrictions given in your prompt. So under quality and details, you notice here we have also the values. So if you put the values so high, it will lead to more steps and the results will also be a better image, although that will take time to generate. Then about down here, you notice we have the seed and different numbers result in new variations in your image. And then down here, we have the number of images you generate. So if I click one, I'll get one image. If I click two, I'll get two images. You notice what is happening at the top here. If I click three, you notice now I have three images. I would get three images here. So that is the use of the number of images. So I'll leave it at three. And then down here, this is where you type your prompt. So you basically give the details of your prompt. For instance, let me type here squirrel or squirrel chewing a carrot. Squirrel chewing a carrot. Now, you notice here I have just left my prompt guidance to be seven so that I don't put it at a higher value to get as close as possible to my image. So I'll, if I put it at 14, that will adjust it. So I'll just set it at seven. Then down here, the number of uh, images, I'll leave it at three. And then if now I give this prompt, if I want to get the image from this prompt, I'll click on generate. And now you notice it is just generating a squirrel chewing a carrot, and there it is. So you notice we have our squirrel there chewing a carrot. But you notice I can only see two images, yet I had selected three. So I come to the hand tool at the top here, I click on that, and then now I can drag my images to the center of my screen. And you notice now we have our squirrel there chewing carrot. So we have three different ones. We have this one that is chewing a broken carrot, we have this one that has a full carrot on the ground and chewing a piece. And we have this one actually with a holding a full carrot and chewing a piece. So now that is how you generate the images. You can also move the images. If I click on this one, I can bring it to the top of the other images. So that's how you use the second item here. Then, then now if I want to generate another image, I simply click on generate at the top here and I'm brought back to my canvas here where now I can type the next image that I want. So again, using the hand tool, I can drag this one sideways. Then I click on generate so that I'm able now to get this frame here where I can now type something else. Now, I want to generate something else on this column, but I want to change these settings here. I want to generate only two images, so I'll click on two there, and then, and then I'll make the prompt guidance to be less so that you see what happens with that. The same prompt, but now I've reduced the prompt guidance from seven to three or to two. Let me put it at two. Then I still do the same prompt for the squirrel chewing a carrot. Then I click on generate, and there we have it. So you notice with the second prompt with prompt guidance at two, 
of course I've decided to put two images. You notice like this image is off. Even the details, if you if you are to compare that with the first image at the top here, you notice these two images are off. They are not as clean as we would say the first three are. So that's how you use the prompt guidance here to get what you need. And seven is a good number to begin with. So if now I want to use an image, maybe I want to use this image, the third image here. I simply click on that image. I simply right click on that image and then I can click on download and then I can save my image and then I can save my image. I click on save. Notice it is a very smart image of the squirrel chewing a carrot. The next thing that I want to show you is how to use image to image. So you upload a selected image to use as inspiration. So I'll click on select that so that I can upload an image and then I'll come to my images down here and I'll use the image of this Spider-Man here to use as my reference image. Then I click on upload. Then I can adjust the strength here. I want to generate a squirrel chewing a carrot, but now I generate from the Spider-Man here. So I click on generate and uh, you notice the kind of image we get. So we have the reference image here of the Spider-Man on a bicycle, and then it has a bridge at the far end. And now generating a squirrel chewing a carrot using this image, you notice we now get a squirrel with a carrot and has a bike, just like our Spider-Man here. And the second one here is a squirrel, and the background is also almost the same as the background we have for our Spider-Man here. So that is how you use image to image. Finally, if they have of late introduced what we call the filters. So if I come to the filters here, let me delete the image to image. Then I come to the filters here. I can generate an image and decide on the filter that I need. Let me in this case now generate a boy holding a spear. Then I click on generate and uh, there it is. You notice we have a boy holding a spear. And indeed we have the two holding the spears. And then if now I click on generate and change the filter here, you notice currently I can change this filter. I just click on that. If now I click on filter, you notice we have different filters here. We have delicate detail, radiant symmetry, and all this. So let me use the lash illumination, click on that. And then I click on generate for the same prompt of a boy holding a spear. And there it is. You now notice our images have changed. They look a bit, they look just like the filter that we have used. And again, if I need to download the images, I simply right click on the image, then I can click on download. If I don't want the image, I can click on delete and our image is deleted. If I go back to my first image, now, if I come and click on this tool, you notice I can select the color that I want to paint on my picture. So let me check green. And then if now I come to this one, you notice I can paint the squirrel to be green in color. So you can do that. And if you don't want to do that, you can control Z so that you undo that. You can also delete part of the image. Maybe I don't want this part of the carrot, the end part, I simply click on delete this way. You simply click on that. And then down here, you click on erase. You give it time. And you notice now our carrot part has been deleted. Let us delete a bigger portion. Maybe all that part, we don't want it. You just highlight that and you click on erase and our carrot part has been erased. And so that is how you basically use playground AI. I hope this has been helpful to help you start off using Playground AI to generate such nice looking images. Kindly like this video, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.